Well, it's been a long road for both of these teams. Starting two days ago, Evil Geniuses getting the best of E-Hug in their opening match. Cloud9 downing Team Liquid. Then they ran into each other in the upper bracket. In that matchup, Cloud9, well, they went 2-0 and looked damn impressive doing so. EG falling down in the lower bracket, getting the best of Team Liquid there. And moving on now to take on Cloud9 coming out of the lower bracket in our grand finals. Not only has it been a great series, it's been the longest series we could have asked for. All five games being played. EG taking on Cloud9 with the hardware and our $10,000 grand prize now on the line Please live from it. South by Southwest here in Austin, Texas. My friend, what more could we have asked for? Exactly what I was going to say right after you too. <laughs> great games, both teams playing spectacular a lot of these games are just really up to the drafts i mean the movement of course by both teams has been just so good of course but the draft screen overall is just it's really repetitive kind of but mm -hmm. they just play it so well both teams just know exactly Ten what they want they want to know what they want to do with these lineups and i think the way that c9 yeah. did this with this drow ranger last game was just spectacular Dyer watching the way that they just you know they were like you know what this hero is not the strongest. He takes too much to build up. We're just going to get him his level 6 and move him the hell out of the lane, give Visage full free farm, Dyer and it worked so down. well for them, especially because of how hard they put RTZ down with this TA middle. I absolutely love the way Cloud9 is leading off now with this draft, just saying, you know what, we've been doing some, some kind of weird stuff, a little bit of different stuff. No, we're just going to go ahead and get Eternal Envy as Luna. Ten and, of course, we're going to get AUI as Chen. On the side of EG, though, they snagged the Nyx Assassin and the Crystal Five Maiden, so keeping remain. things rather wide open on, uh, on their part. That's the one downside, though, of a draft like Cloud9 is, is showing time. right now. It's pretty, pretty wide open. I mean, it, or it's not pretty wide open. It's pretty easy to identify what's going to be going on. Chances are it's going to be Eternal Envy farming the Luna out of the safe lane with the Chen and the Chen. And we don't see a bat rider this game. So yes. for once, he is getting banned out. He did not get picked up in the first two at all. And I'm surprised we haven't been seeing an invoker coming out of either of these teams. They, I guess they're not really, they just don't really feel the hero is strong or it doesn't fit the play style mm -hmm. or they just don't want to be using it versus this other Ten team or versus these other teams because they right. want to be able to deny the heroes that these other teams are using because we've been seeing Five a lot of shared heroes remaining. between these two teams, of course. Absolutely. You know, bat rider has been picked and been given a lot of attention throughout this tournament. But, you know, when you look at, uh, at this series, Dyer you know, bat has bat. not fared all that well in this series from beginning to end. So this time, not a huge surprise, really, to see him banned out this time around. Now, one thing that EG will have open to them with the Nyx Assassin and the Crystal Maiden, I mean, Nyx Assassin traditionally does run in the offlane, but, um, you know, whenever Ten you see something remain. that is, again, pretty pretty easy to identify, a Luna who's gonna want, going to want safe lane farm, a Chin there as well, Io Radiant is a potential hero bat. that we might see them pick up. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they picked that up for Pylai Dai coming out of the second ban phase. Oh, actually, EG banned in the first two again. Oh, yes, so, yeah. oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I was actually... After that <laughs> performance by Pauline, yes, you know exactly. that they're going to be banning. We've kind of forgot about it for a minute. So. Oh, yeah. It, dead on right. I was actually remaining. staring at the Mirana and kind of obsessing over that for whatever reason. But uh, anyway, Five yeah, Cloud9. Um, you know, with the Chen and the Luna, two very comfortable heroes for Eternal Envy and for, uh, and for AUI. Time. This is something EG could try to abuse, though. I mean, in terms of anything, just even early warding, trying to invade the jungle, make sure you ward, slow the Chen down, rotate with the aggressive potential of a Crystal Maiden plus one, assuming that will be a Nyx Assassin in the off lane. And I really want to see what they draft, most notably for Arteezy and for Fear. And Fear, you know, we talked about it. This is going to be another game where we have to mention it. This has to be hurting him at this point. Like, yeah, just, for sure. Just call it what it is. He has to be in pain. He's been icing his arm now for about the last four and a half hours in between games. He has really held through like a champ, but it's got to be taking its toll. And I really think a lot of this game is going to be riding on the shoulders of Arteezy to carry his team to victory. Yeah, for sure. We see Cloud9 actually banning out pick. the AA, so I, they don't really want Evil Geniuses to get it either. We haven't seen EG run at the AA too often at yeah. all, really, but I'm sure they just don't want to be dealing with it, and that hero is very, very annoying when you're playing as a Chen, because, you know, obviously he obstructs you from using your mech, from using your handgun. If your teammates do get that Ice Blast on them, it just has no effect whatsoever, so good bands coming out of Cloud9, and I'm curious to see what they're going to be picking up next, if they're going to be going for their second support and revealing that, or revealing their offlane, or the, maybe their midline. Remaining. Yeah, I mean, right now it's so hard to tell on both sides. I mean, uh, you five know, both of these teams, remaining. they know each other, and, you know, this is the beauty of a best of five. Once you get this deep into a series like this, these teams have such a good read on each other Dia that they can team. usually take some things away that normally uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have to worry about getting banned. But Shadow Fiend is going to be the pickup for Cloud9. Gotta love that. The stand-in all-star demon, one of his specialities, that Shadow Fiend, and we saw him go straight ham on that hero earlier this weekend. Yeah, for sure. And 
as well. It's also Radiant again this time. And like I've been pointing out in the past few games, that Radiant Shadow Fiend is something to be scared of. Because even if you do shut him down in the lane, he has this Ten jungle to resort to. And AUI on his Chen is not one of these Chens which just sits there and farms and farms Ten and farms in the jungle. Remaining. No. He right away gets a creep, he stacks a camp, he pulls or, or whatever, and he Result sends his creep time. to just go help out his lanes as much as possible before he goes and just starts farming for himself. So this is going to be really good because he's going to be able to stack a couple camps for the Shadow Fiend if the Shadow Fiend does have any trouble in this mid lane or wherever they end up even putting this Shadow Fiend. It could potentially still Weaver. be in a couple other places. And we do see Weaver picked up by EG. Radiant but yeah, AUI pick. does a great job of not having to farm the jungle and he leaves it open to the rest of his teammates. Well, even aside from that, like you said, he can stack the camps, he can do, you know, set that up, that comeback mechanic, or he can just grab a creep, send it to lane, and say, yep, I'm just going to harass you to death and help free up some space for the Shadow Fiend. EG, as you mentioned, grabbing the Weaver once again. We've already seen Arteezy play the Weaver once, so it's kind of hard to identify right now where that hero is going to end up being. Could end up being Ten a one position for remaining. fear, could end up being... Uh, Arteezy in the second position with it. Yeah, and EG's just a big fan of these bugs, really. They just, they, <laughs> we've been seeing a lot. They pick up the Nyx Assassin with the Weaver, and it's, yep. it's a really strong combination that you do see a lot of teams picking up. They have, they're just both, of course, they both have Invis, and Weaver is just very, very hard to kill, and Nyx is just a great hero all around, as we see a lot of teams just be picking him over and over and over and putting him in this offlane, and he just can do so much. Even if he doesn't find the pickoffs as needed, Impale and Carabas are just two super strong abilities, and we see huh. EG pick up a Sand King love now. Absolutely love Sand King and uh, a big beneficiary of the latest round of patches, of course. Um, removing the mana cost on Blink. The hero also has the option, and you know, we have to wait and see who's going to be running and how they're going to decide to run it. Sometimes you've, you'll even see Evil Geniuses run in mid. Ten you'll also see it occasionally remaining. at the head or at least as a part of an offensive tri lane. Tough to tell Five as of right remaining. now. But even, even if he does get behind, he actually can. It's a little wonky, a little unorthodox, but he can He's dip into the time. jungle and actually jungle fairly effectively with neutral stacking. Yeah, absolutely. Sandstorm, the buffs that it's got on the AoE increase, as well as the way you can just stack camps and you can just sit there. The creeps don't run too far out of the distance, so they still continue to get hit by the sandstorm if you do just sit there and use it properly. Mm -hmm. But now looking at this clockwork pick out of Cloud9, I don't think we've seen them pick this hero at all. And not only that, taking a look at their heroes, they have a Shadow Fiend, a Clockwork, and a Luna. So now I'm confused who's going to be playing which hero here. Because yeah. if, if we have Demon on Shadow Fiend and we have Eternal Envy playing the Luna, that's going to be a Sing Sing Clockwork. Or yeah. it's going to be support clockwork. So I'm a little bit interested by this trap by C9. And it's they do ban out the Morphling. They don't want to be seeing RTZ playing that one again. But yeah, I'm really not too sure what this clockwork pick is. We've never seen them play before. Remaining. So maybe they have some pocket strat up their sleeves right now. Yeah, and that's an, an excellent point. Five like you said, you start remaining. ticking them off. Obviously, you know, the a Demon is taken. Eternal Envy is taken. AUI will be playing the Chen, no doubt about Reserve it. Time. And that just leaves Sing Sing and Pile I die. And uh, yeah, Radiant I want to see how this ends pick. up rounding out with their last pick as well. They don't have a whole lot of bonus time left, so should be just about 60 seconds at an absolute maximum before we know. I'm just as intrigued by Evil Geniuses, though. We've seen them do a lot of creative things with the Sand King pick in the past. We know Fear does love that hero, loves running the hero, and loves being uh, playing the hero in a variety of roles. And and uh, again, you know, having seen Arteezy already run the Weaver once before, it's uh, coming out of that mid position here today. Ten Tough to identify remaining. what Cloud9 is going to be up against, but you know, anytime you have Five a Sand King on the board remaining. in conjunction with a Crystal Maiden, that's a hell of a lot of early laning phase lockdown. You're going to have a lot of magic Reserve damage time. at your disposal and big AoEs from the Epicenter and the Freezing Field, not to mention Weaver's ability to uh, contribute to that with Shikuchi. Then you've got the nice ba uh, balance of physical damage as well as the lockdown that a Nyx Assassin offers you. But Cloud9 Dying actually going to go pick. with the Support Lion. So yeah, it's definitely going to be an offlane clockwork now unless they decide to do some dual lanes, which... Yeah, it's going to benefit them a lot, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fear picking up the Sand King because we yeah. did see him do oh. this. Oh, and as I say that, they pick up a Lycan, but that's an Arteezy oh, Lycan. So, wow. Wow. This is a bit unpredictable, but wow. Some unorthodox drafts, and I'm really interested. And this is our fifth game, so of course anything goes, and they, they could do a lot of different things right now. And both these teams look like they're trying to pull out some pocket strats. Sing Sing will be on that clockwork, and looking forward to see his performance on that hero. You know, I don't know that I've ever seen Sing Sing play a clockwork, at least in a game I've casted. I like think I've seen him play it once or twice. I don't know if yeah. I casted the games, but I was definitely watching where I saw him play yeah. when they were using a stand-in, so... This will be pretty interesting to watch, and Sing Sing is great at using these, uh, these heroes, which have these skill shot abilities. So oh, yeah. Hookshot is a bit of a skill shot, so we'll see what ends up happening with this, and I'm excited to see this game. And yeah, it's a game five, so 
Who else could be less excited, right? A lot of split push here coming out from EG as well, having the Weaver once he gets up an item or two. And, of course, the Lycan, an absolute split push monster. And can't wait to see Prepare how they put that lineup battle. together. And I'm really looking forward to see uh, how Demon's going to perform once again on this Shadow Fiend, a hero which he is notorious for playing. Um, and, and, I mean, just at a whole other level. You know, we were talking before about how sometimes players just sometimes get a hero. That is definitely the case with a Demon and Shadow Fiend. We could see Cloud9 moving through their own jungle. Same is true on the side of EG. And uh, as we count down, we'll run through the lineups very, very quickly. On the side of C9, we're going to have Pile I Die playing on the line. It's going to be Eternal Envy back on the Luna. Has played this hero a lot here this weekend. And then we're going to have Sing Sing on the clockwork. Chen going to be played by AUI, one of his signature heroes now. And of course, Demon on the Shadow Fiend on the other side of the river. Going to be PPD playing on the Crystal Maiden once again. Has played that hero so much over this weekend. Fear going to be farming up the Weaver, seconds. the Nyx Assassin handled by Universe. Going to be the Sand King. Surprise pick, a little bit of one anyway. Played by Zai and that Lycan going to be played by Arteezy. I'm really interested how they're going to end up laning this and everything. It's it's. I'm actually baffled. I don't, I don't really know how to say this. I don't know where they're going to end up doing any of this, but they do spot out the Sand King going toward the bottom lane, and they do see that he has a stout shield, so they see that he is going to be farming a bit. Horn blows, and we're underway for our decisive Game 5 here at the Monster Energy Invitational, live from South by Southwest. EG taking on Cloud9. First prize, $10,000 and a sweet-looking trophy, I'll tell you that much. So we are underway. Lane's taking shape. We do see Universe is going into that off lane. It is going to be Zai right now setting up shop here in mid. PPD on the Crystal Maiden, babysitting that haste rune. And Arteezy? Haste. Yeah, Arteezy, what is he doing? He's hanging out in the jungle, at least for now. Is he going to be jungling the Lycan while Fear just simply Denied. plays the one position by himself? Yeah, yeah it, looks like it. it looks like they're probably going to do some a bit of dual laning in mid, but Zai is taking this mid roll as a sanking right now, so a bit surprising to be seeing this, but... Wow, I'm really interested to see how this is going to end up playing out. And Sing Sing playing this clockwork as well. So we're seeing some bit, a bit of strange things coming out of I both understand. teams, but this is going to be awesome. I see how this is going to end up working. PPD is going to be able to come into mid here to help out Zai whenever he needs to as the Crystal Maiden, but he's going to be able to come and help out the Lycan in the jungle as well by using Frostbite. That's what they're going to do, I think, is just split his time. Yeah, bouncing back and forth, helping whichever one is free and needs help at that moment. Now, the mid Sand King, I absolutely do love here. And usually, I mean, you've seen EG do this before, but yeah, certainly never seen Zai doing it. Dyer's middle yeah, but tower this is some is very attack. interesting stuff they're doing here. We've never really seen anything like this, at least not in quite a while. So some, some definitely some stuff that they've practiced before and they want to just pull out and they're just like, you know what? This is the last game. Anything could happen. Yep. <laughs> Putting it all on the line. I love it. I love it when teams do this and go for something just a little different. Say, so, you know what? We're, we, yep, we're gonna, actually going to try to go on Demon. PPD was just about in range. Only has Frostbite at his disposal as he has not found level 2 yet, but Enough about that. Hang on. They're converging three here now. And Universe up on the high ground has Impale showed himself right there. So Demon should know and have a decent idea of what's going on. Universe looks like he's going to hang here for a while. Is this going to be a tri-lane mid? This is kind of weird. They're splitting a lot of experience and not giving... Their Sanking's only level two. And Sanking is one of those heroes that desperately needs levels because yeah. his stun has horrible range early on levels. So I'm not really too sure what they're doing. PPD is level two at least, and he has his two nukes, but we'll probably be seeing him rotate into the jungle, and as you were saying, helping this Lycan, and we do see him picking up an Invis on top. But the thing that I see about this that isn't the most beneficial for EG is the fact that Demon, like I said, on this Radiant, on Radiant side with Shadow Fiend, you don't really have to worry so much about the laning fact. You can go into the jungle and really recover off that, and we're going to see AUI. He's going to be doing his own jungling camp. He doesn't have to force, he doesn't have to move his creeps around this game so much and secure the lanes. He can get his own farm up and worry about himself for once in one of these games. And yeah, we saw Demon pick up early boots as well, which was a very smart pickup because he saw what these guys were trying to do on him and trying to punish him. And PPD, gonna rotate into mid again, up against Demon, has a little bit of time left on this invis room. We'll go ahead and spin the Nova, no Frostbite to follow. Looks like Zai was not in range. You know, Bro Strike, one of those abilities, one of the only abilities, if I'm not mistaken, the only ability in the game, um, one of the few anyway, that functions, that you gain, uh, gain range on it. Um, it's a stun that gains range as it's leveled up, so a little bit short in range at that point for them to really try to execute anything there. We're three minutes in, don't have a kill on the board yet, but yeah, this is ostensibly working out to be a tri-lane mid for EG. Yeah, and um, it's not really working out the best for them right now. They haven't netted a kill on the Shadow Fiend yet. The Sand King is free farming, though. He is 15 and 8, but Shadow Queen's finding a couple CS for himself as well. He's 9 and 0, and he will be having this jungle to go back to once AUI decides to move around and find a couple, try to find some ganks with, his, with uh, whatever creeps he finds. 
Elsewhere, we can see Pylai die, and most notably, Eternal Envy. Yep, they're just kind of hanging out. They're just hitting creeps Boom, and building stuff, man, goes. playing Minecraft. No, no one in their face and absolutely nothing to interrupt. And benefiting a lot from it as he's sitting at 24 CS. No surprise to see him tops on the board. Yeah, and this is why I don't really, I don't really agree with this, because C9 is getting so much farm on their main carry right now. Luna's getting absolute free farm. The Clockwork's getting free levels in this offlane because he's a solo versus a Weaver. And Weaver doesn't really, he does good versus the Clockwork, but Clockwork can really take advantage of this and just keep cogging him and just get full levels. And you don't really need CS that much on that hero. And we do see Pilot die rotating and he throws out the mana drain on Pi PPD. Yeah, just a little bit of annoyance there. Yep. And uh, yeah, Universe sitting at level two, has made his way back into lane now and. Eternal Envy, almost level six now, is going to be very tough to try to get near, you know, for, let alone, for experience, let alone trying to actually get CS. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen them try to dive Sing Sing yet. He's almost level six at this point, so taking a look at the early experience graph, the gold, not so much a concern, but you can see already just pure efficiency-wise, 1,500 experience going in favor of Cloud9, and you know what? The gold is right about there with them, too, just about seven, 750 in favor of them without a single kill on the board. And like, Lycan is a very, very strong hero that a lot of people overlook. If that hero gets a couple items under, on, on him and he gets a book relatively early, he can really just start melting towers oh, yeah. if he has a couple people. Or he can even do it with himself if his team is making space around the map. And yeah, we see Demon not really too worried about just getting all this farm in mid lane. He's getting a couple stacks up, getting ready to set that up and get his level. Just He's just going to mooch levels in mid until he can just go in there and clear those stacks very easily. Yeah, he's almost level 6 as it stands. He'll probably delay uh, his last point in, or his first point into his all instead just go for max raise. But, yeah, I mean, right now I'm with you. They, like, the status quo is not panning out for EG at all, and they're really, really relying on our tour to get things in gear coming out of this jungle. And, you know, Jungle Lycan was nerfed hard into the ground, and, and you know, Lycan fell off for the longest time, became a crazy surprise pick for a little while, has been seeing a bit more play, but traditionally, at least in recent times, is usually run in lane at least for a little while. Instead, starting him out in the jungle, he is a little slow out of the gate. AUI, though, not slow at all, as he is moving under cover of smoke with a little bit of help from Eternal Envy. They're going to try to catch him asleep at the wheel here in mid, or possibly just go ahead and rotate all the way to top and take a shot at Fear. And I wouldn't be too surprised if EG knows something's happening, because they do just see a lion right now bottom. They don't see the Luna farming. They might think he's in the jungle, but Zai might actually get caught out here, and yeah, he yeah. definitely is going to get caught out. First blood! Netted for Cloud9, and they may push this tower. Yeah, why in the, why in the hell wouldn't you? Yeah, and something that they Dyer's did, which is very, very strange, is they brought attack. the Luna with them, so they know they want levels up on this line, and it's it's working out so well for them oh. because... PPD in trouble. Gets slowed, he's gonna eat the Lucent Beam, Eclipse, now it's Treads versus no boots, and yeah, he's... Oh, he Dyer's actually did decide not to go for it. Just knowing Envy and how aggressive he tends to play, thought he would go ahead and pop the Eclipse and see what he could get done, but instead, it just gives him a pat on the back on his way out, now coming Dyer's back to go ahead and, and uh, continue beating on this mid-tier one tower. Rotation for PPD coming over. Not going to be able to stop this at all. So a big first Dyer's blood advantage and bringing down the first falling. tower of the game as well, just short of seven minutes in. Yeah, now the Goldcraft is starting to show a little bit more in favor and the experience guys, of course, showing more in favor of C9. And Eternal Envy might go for a very greedy build here. He oh. has his treasure. Sing Sing. Right Sing Sing right now. Yep, has Artur locked in. Arteezy in some trouble, forced to pop his ulti just so he can run away. And Sing Sing, I mean, and you know, that's the thing. Even though they didn't kill him there, just because of the choice to send him into the jungle, he is just short of level 7, so he's not hurting horrendously bad. But just being able to force him out like this all this time, he has to spend walking back to the base. And walking very slowly, by the way, as he doesn't even have tier 2 boots up. All this time, he's not farming, delaying those items. Yeah, and Universe gets some time right now, though. Since Eternal Envy left that lane and they just have a line down there farming, Universe is able to capitalize on this, and he's going to be getting some pretty decently timed Arcane Boots coming out for him. So good rotations come out of C9. They did get the first blood. They got that mid tower very, very early, and they're going to have a very early kill online. But Universe is getting some space, and now they're going to be engaging on Pi, and Pi is definitely going to go down here. Yep. Caught out. Here comes Eternal Envy, though, getting a return kill by popping the Eclipse. I'm surprised they didn't take a shot at the Courier there. I know they were... Low, uh, low damage heroes, but didn't even try. Just ran under it instead, focusing on bringing down Pi. But it ends up being an even exchange, trading five for five. Yeah, and I think Top also got gone on a bit. I think Sing Sing caught him in the cogs, and Fear was actually forced to pop his time lapse. So his time lapse is on cooldown now. So he is a little bit susceptible to a death, but they don't really have anything that can really kill him just yet. Taking a look at overall net worth, it's Eternal Envy right at the top of the board. Fear and Arteezy next in line behind that. And even though they dedicated so much to trying to hold down Demon, Demon is right there with them. Demon, in fact, is less than 100 gold behind Arteezy right now and less than 300 gold behind Fear. They dedicated so much to that middle lane, and so far their gain has been nil.
Yeah, absolutely. And we, Shadow Fiend, although he doesn't he doesn't have the most farm right now, he's been sticking in this mid lane because he can right now because he knows the other team, EG, has been moving around quite a lot with their supports. So he's going to find as much farm as he can middle, and then he's going to finally make his way into this jungle and take the stacks, which he does have at his big camp. He has a quad stack right there. So we're probably going to see him go in there and do that Dyer's very, very soon. Tower is under Up at top, we can see EG has hooked up his four and perhaps ready to make a run at Sing Sing and this Tier 1 tower. Universe under cover of Vendetta has about a quarter time left on it. Vlad's already up now on Arteezy. And yeah, they're just going to look to push this down. And Cloud9 probably just going to end up trading one for one. Radiance yeah, of course. Is but the thing attack. about uh, Cloud9 is they Radiance do have a couple heroes that can spam fortified. and pull the creep wave aggro. So they're going to have a pretty tough time, especially if they are, all start to react. And yeah, they are. We see a lot of heroes start moving for C9 top. And yeah. C9 can actually spam out these creep waves and pull aggro on it. While we look at EG's lineup, they only really have the Crystal Maiden to start spamming out these lanes. And AUI might get gone on right now, but no, he's got the Centaurs there just to just to stop this Lycan from going anywhere. Lycan is going to be able to find some farm in this bottom lane, though. And Eternal Envy continuing to add to his copious net worth, as we can see. He's not even tops in terms of last hits. He's just been very, very efficient and very effective in all of his movement. Everything that he's done has been on point. He is very, very close, though. It's actually at the... I mean, and think again how much they dedicated to try to hold down Demon, and guess who's right on top with those last hits after cl clearing that big camp down in the Radiant Jungle. And now with the double damage rune, he's happy to just go to work bringing down Ancients. Yeah, and he might as well. I mean, there's nowhere for him to farm other than that Ancient camp right now, and he does spot a haste rune up at this top room, and that's a very dangerous rune to have this early in the game, especially because of how tanky the Shadow Fiend is. He's level 9. He has Treads, Ogre Axe, and another 1,000 gold on him, so oh. a, a nice hook coming out of Sync, but not really going to net a kill for them. Managed to scare the hell out of him, though, but uh, in the meantime, Demon has made his way up still. Yeah, I was going to say he still had a smidge of time on that double damage, but not quite. Now EG's got to decide, is this worth fighting over? Down in the jungle, we actually see AUI had some eye on Lycan as well. But yeah, they're going to bail off of this and just realize if we hang around, the only difference is it's going to be a dead tower Dyer's and two dead heroes. Tower is yeah, under for attack. sure. And C9 is pretty is far under ahead, attack. actually, out of all this. I mean, the gold and the experience doesn't really show too much, but they are getting a lot of map control out of Dyer's all this. And Zai is, I think, going to be rushing out this Blink Dagger. And we do see AY with Triple Centaur in this mid lane. So that's always a nice thing to have as a Chen. And yeah, like you said, Zai, I mean, he's making okay progress towards the blink, but yeah, I mean, I, the, the mid Sand King, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see his Sand King given some farm, farm priority, but it just hasn't transitioned or translated to anything really worthwhile. Fear helping to Radiant zone down Eternal Envy behind this tier one attack. tower. The rest of EG rotating through. Sing Sing's going to be there to spot him 10 seconds until he has his hook at his disposal. Up at top, Radiant yeah, well, I was going to say, we're actually going to have a reaction coming out of Demon, and they may try to try and uh, get a, a straggler. Universe is going to double back and perhaps get eyes on someone. But nope, looks like EG deciding to cut their, uh, to take their gains and not take a chance. Yeah, of course. And I think we're going to see Demon go for another greedy build. He did pick up the Ogre Axe, but he could Radiant's definitely just go over and just pick up a Dominator like we saw him doing this in this series uh, yesterday. So it is a possibility. And they can go very, very greedy, even though there is a Lycan and he is rushing out that book, which he should be doing. They can they can definitely fight this lane game, late game, and they can really split push quite hard with this Luna and with the Shadow Fiend. They have a really very balanced lineup. They have a lot of spell damage as well as a lot of physical damage. So the later this game goes, it's a pretty even matchup, especially if the Sankin gets a lot of farm and this Nyx also gets a Blink Dagger. They have a lot of lockdown. But on top of that, this Chen can also, of course, get his mech, and he has a lot of healing. And if he gets a pipe up, I have to be... If he has his pipe and a mech up, I'm, I'm going to have to give this to C9 because they just have much more farm on their heroes right now, and they're going to start closing the map. But we do see Sankin get a relatively early Blink Dagger up. Yeah, that Blink is going to have to pay off, fortified. though. That's the kind of, sometimes you see a Sankin get a Blink Dagger, and you know the epicenters are maybe late in coming or none in coming. This could be a potential Dyer's big engagement. Let's see if C9 attack. wants to hang around. Artur... Arteezy ready there to try to pursue them out. And you can see Fear still hanging out all the way over in the woods. He's going to try to come in from behind and get into a very nice back flanking position. And still waiting on the engagement either out of Sing Sing or out of that Sand King, depending on which one wants to pull the trigger first. There's a rocket shot out. No follow up with the hook. Fear again still hanging out right behind the side shop. Over on the left, we can see Zai and Sing Sing both right beside each other trying <laughs> to find good positions. Ten heroes in this bottom lane right now, so no action anywhere else on the map. No one else is farming. They're just completely committed to taking this tower, and EG does not want to lose this tower by any means since they've already lost so much map control. Universal spots Sing Sing. Yep, he's going to go for it, but hooked into, and the immediate finger of death blows him up. 
Arteza going to try to chase down the uh, the Luna on the side. We see Zai did get off the epicenter, but the damage just not enough to finish everything up. And as Demon dies, he does damage as well. Arteza chasing down the Luna. Buyback comes out from Universe. So off of the buyback, he's back up. Pylai Dai trying to retreat. The epicenter, not bad at all. And AUI going to be forced to teleport away and will be able to make it away just barely. So. EG manages to keep the tower standing and manages to take a pretty nice win there, but did cost them a little more than they would have liked. Again, Universe had to buy back. Yeah, but you know what? They got three kills out of that. They And you know what? Our te our, <laughs> sorry, Eternal Envy was forced to move. He moved into this mid lane to just pick up some farm. But yeah, we do see this greedy build coming out of Envy. He picks up a Mask of Death. He's going to be going for this Dominator, and they're just going to get a lot of stacks up and try to just slow down the game. They're not, I don't think they really want to be fighting too much, especially now that they notice that the Sanking has Blink. Yep, and that's uh, that's the, the one token reveal you get. You know, as soon as he picked it up, he wasn't on the map. At least I didn't see him on the map, so they should have known it was coming. And now he's going to show it off again. And this will be a big kill for EG as they pick off Envy, who was playing just a little greedy there in mid and paying the price. And that's just something that you have to consciously commit to memory. There is a Sand King potentially lurking around every corner, ready to stun you out. Yeah, and that's huge because they might even just attempt to go for a Roshan, but they do have eyes on that. This Clockwork rocketed right away and Demon already pinged on it. So they do know that C9 or that EG is going to go for the Rosh. Arteezy with that early Vlad's up, now going for a Necro Book, has the Staff of Wizardry up and the Belt of Strength. Very yeah, and Envy's dead. I don't know if they can really contest this. Yeah. It's going to be pretty tough for them to go in there. So that's going to be a pretty good Roshan for EG. It's going to be very free unless we see Sing Sing maybe try to go for a steal here. Is under attack. Sounds like a Sing Sing move, and he will. He's going to move in a little bit early. Fear doing what damage he can behind that. We're going to hear the, the battle kind of waging out. It is going to be picked up by the Lycan, and they're going to try to make their way out. No, they're actually going to get a free kill on Sing Sing. Now Demon and company have to run. Luna moving back in. We'll pop the Eclipse that's being spread out. Arteezy's Wolves actually eating a lot of it. And we're actually going to see Zai make it away as well. There's a three-man Nova. The Aegis will be popped off. But they're going to get Envy again. And the ultimate from Demon, not even really necessary, as they were able to just kind of clear things out before it went off. However, they did get the Aegis, but bringing down Envy once again. And Demon did decide to go for this BKB rush rather than being greedy. And he had to force it right there. So now this BKB is going to start dwindling down since he picked it up so early. And yeah, EG pulled out very, very well out of this, and now they actually gained a lead. A big experience lead and oh, a yeah. decent gold lead right now. And we see Lycan picking up his book one very, very, not the earliest in the game, but he has his book one up. He has no deaths under his belt, and he's going to be able to pick up another book, and then those towers are really going to start melting. And Eternal Envy dying twice there was just really, really bad for them. And his farm, his farm has just really, really taken a hit. He's now at 5,400 net worth, and he dropped way below Weaver, who is now at 7,000 net worth, who also is getting very, very close to his Lincolns. Yep. And right now, like you said, and it's one thing to have a lead this big, and it was up getting up there. It was about 4,000 gold in favor of Cloud9 up until that last engagement at the pit. But to see it not only be up that high, but to swing so violently, almost a 5,000 gold swing just in the last five minutes or so. And the experience, as you said, now a complete swing and actually the biggest lead of the entire game favoring evil geniuses. And, you know, just having Eternal Envy a little bit interrupted in his farm and his item development, that's going to pay dip for EG. Yeah, for sure. And it was a little bit strange for Sing Sing to engage right there. I mean, he just didn't want them to get this free Roshan, but they got the Aegis and they got the Roshan anyway. And they... Yeah, it's, it, this Blink Dagger on Sanking is just really, really benefiting them how early he got it on. Those were two great kills that he got out of it. And this bottom fight just really is just not doing... That bottom fight really, really hurts C9. Dyer's bottom tower is under now attack. rushing down that tier one. EG has personnel Radiant's in, uh, in range. And then maybe anticipating, yeah, C9 is actually going to try to push fallen. through with all of these creeps from AUI. On. Rocket shot and don't think it spotted anyone just universe was Radiance in range top of it. Tower in the meantime fallen. they lose top tier one and they got to decide are they going to hang are they going to are they going to bail out universe Dyer's is right there is and under attack. looks like he's playing very very patient cloud nine is yet to back out though they're looking for a hook out of sing sing is what they want and Radiance as of yet unable to find it demon attack. is hooked up with them now and there's the howl Right now, Fear in the meantime, Radiant just he got this top tower and now he's pressuring this tier two. And with the Howl, he's do, he does a lot of damage, especially with his Geminate attack. So he gets that double attack plus that Howl bonus damage. And we see C9 decide, you know what, we're not going to push this tower. We just wanted to get force some reaction out of you guys. Yeah. And now we're going to go back to farming a bit. Yeah, Fear is certainly a big beneficiary there. He's crawled his way up to the top of the net worth board. He's actually overtaken Arteezy at this point. And Arteezy's actually ahead of Demon now, too. So, uh, you know, very, very close game, attack. all things considered. Yeah, check the gold. I mean, we're basically back to zero. 
Yeah, it's it's really negligible at this point. One team fight can really swing the way of this game, and we do see EG smoked up, and they're gonna find a kill on Chen. Yep, AUI, Burrow struck, and then caught with the impale. And Cloud9 has to vacate their own jungle now. Arteezy has his ultimate ready if he wants to try and dive. Instead, he's gonna go right to the tower. And Lycan just melts towers so quick, and this is what we talked about before. And now they're gonna go and catch out Demon. That's a big kill. Fear right there with him. Can they get Pilot Eye and Sing Sing? Sing Sing drops the cogs. And unable to pursue past it. Over in the jungle, though, we can see all oh, they're going to be, maybe be able to get Envy again. Arteezy right on top of him. Two more auto attacks will do it. Does he have it? Oh, good juke, but size there. And that's uh, going to be a triple kill going the way of Arteezy with a dominating streak assembled now by Fear. And yeah, with those three down, nothing they can do to keep this tier two standing. And this is really Radiance beginning to get out of control if you're Cloud9. And, you know, this is what we talk about all the time with heroes like Lycan. There are just some heroes where if you end up losing a fight, it's not just a lost fight, it's a lost fight and a lost tower. And now two Radiant towers down tower off of fallen. a good exchange from EG. Yeah, and it's looking it's looking really, really scary for C9, actually, because now it's 19 minutes in. This Lycan has his book three and treads, and he's level 13 on him. So towers are not really going to be defendable by C9. They're going to be able to, EG's just going to be able to bum rush right through them and just kill them so quickly. We do see the blade mail picked up by the clockwork, but it's just, it's not really going to do too much. I don't even think they need to focus people. They're just going to go for towers, really, at this point, if they want to. They can bundle up, wait for this book to come back up, and just go completely, just go straight for towers completely, yeah. It's amazing uh, how much EG has managed to, to turn this around, given the way that laning phase went. I mean, we saw the first five minutes or so, they lost ground in both experience and gold to the tune of about 1,500 of pure efficiency. There wasn't even a kill on the board, and they'd fallen so far behind. But since then, just outmaneuvering Cloud9 and taking advantage of the opportunities presented to them. Roshan will be back up approximately five minutes from right now. But yeah, I like the way you put it. Bundle up, heal up, get ready, then go rush another tower. No reason they can't play that way. Cloud9 in anticipation of that, though, looks like they want to try to set the tone as they move as five up into the top left corner. And we do see a five-man smoke come out of EG. So we, C9 does have to be very careful because they only have this BKB up on the Shadow Fiend. They have this greedy build on this Luna with the Dominator. But it looks like C9 actually is seeing this coming. So we'll see what ends up happening. Yep. There's Arteezy. And here we go. Oh, beautiful impale. But there's going to be Sing Sing hitting the hook. And he got two. Most notably, he got Arteezy. And now the ultimate damage coming out from Demon. Big turnaround for Cloud9. They forced the buyback now out of PDD. Fear is still up and fighting those Sing Sing in some trouble and will be cleaned up. Demon now caught out and stunned out with another Burrow Strike. Universe is there and they managed to bring him down. Fear pursuing this out. Zai's not done yet either. He's got his Blink Dagger on the ready. Will Blink in front of Envy. He's got Fear coming behind him. Now the Burrow Strike. And see you back at the well, my friend. Full five-man wipe. And EG now doubling them up, and just look at the perfect positioning they're in right in front of this tower if they want to hang. Doesn't look like they do. Thought they might want to push that tier two afterwards, but another big win going the way of Evil Geniuses, and just look at that gold graph turned upside down from only 10 minutes ago. Yeah, and Pi got, did not actually get to get any spells off in that team fight. He got blown up by that Sand King ult. Zai is just playing spectacular right now. This Blink Dagger is just doing so much for them. As soon as he got Radiant's that, that's when the tides just completely turned yep. for EG. So EG is just really recovering so well after this not-so-great start they had. And now it's looking like their game almost entirely. They have 11.5k almost net worth on attack. Fear. He's going for this Desolator, and he has this Lincolns already. So with this Desolator plus this Lycan with his book and how, towers are just going to melt so fast. And EG collapsing down the bottom. We're going to have AUI spotted by Universe there. He's actually going to uh, yep, turn around and try to go for it. In the meantime, down here, we see Demon in trouble, forced to pop his BKB. Arteezy and Fear bring him down. And this is getting ugly. Taking a look at buyback status, guess what? Buybacks are Radiant's up on some, tower. not up attack. on Demon. They're going to take that Radiant's tier two. And yeah, they're going to go They're going to keep through. going. Yeah, they just popped the book up. Lycan just used his ultimate, and he just used Howl. I mean, the Howl's going to wear off, but they're going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage on this tower. And Pi actually does find a kill on this Crystal Maiden with Radiant's Luna, but that's really not the kills you want to be getting when your Shadow Fiend just got Radiant's picked off. Glyphs pop to try and buy some time, and we actually see Chen enchanting or taking over the, uh, the melee book creep so EG happy to go ahead and turn around after that but yeah 17 to 9 in this game going heavily in their favor getting up towards a 10,000 gold advantage and well past 
at 10,000 experience advantage. Taking a look at the net worth chart, we can see it's Weaver and Lycan way atop, three and 4,000 gold ahead of the closest competition being Fear. Yeah, and we did see Demon actually pick up a Blink Dagger too on his Shadow Fiend, so he is not just a straight up carry anymore. He had to go for something that he could just try to get in better positionings, but Zai just getting some great stuns off with the follow-up from Universe. There's just so much chain stun that they have in this lineup that if, if Demon doesn't get his BKB off, he can get bursted so damn fast, and not even just because of the magical damage. If Arteezy can get close to him, he can just rip him to shreds, especially because of the Desolator pickup that the Weaver also has. Arteezy spawning him out. There's going to be a hook in from Sing Sing and a nice two-man uh, impale. But, as we can see, everything popped to bring those heroes down. Fear's now going to work on Envy and being blocked by the Wolves. Can they chase him down? Fear right behind him. Universe going to hit an impale. Coming behind this, another epicenter. That's going to be right on Demon, and he drops once again. Evil Geniuses pursuing out Cloud9. Fear just going to sidestep those cogs. Hitting so hard now with that Desolator up. Another good blink impale. Godlike indeed. Fear showing us all, busted wing or not, he came in prepared to take this game over, and he certainly has. 9-0 and oh in a 24-minute game. Radiant's this is going to be the last of the outer tier towers for Cloud9, and they are absolutely hemorrhaging at this point. they got to find a way Radiant's to extend this game, but at fallen. this point, I don't know that it's even possible. I don't even know if extending the game is going to be really too much you can do. Like, once you get this book three up, you're just such a menace. Yes, they've gotten a couple kills on him, but not even just that. They have so many items on all their other heroes from all the towers they're starting to bring down that if... EG decides to pick a fight somewhere else, and, and if they catch C9 there and Arteezy's in proper positioning, he can just push a Rax so damn quickly all on his own. So it's not looking good for C9 at all right now, unfortunately, after the great start that they had. Take a look at Zai. He's actually added a Vela Discord to his inventory as well, and this is where the choices for uh, the choice of Eternal Envy to this point to not pick up a BKB. Loves these greedy builds. He's not going to have any magic immunity whatsoever. He's going to be a big target, and especially the poor Lion and Chen. I mean, these two poor heroes, if they're caught with an epicenter at this point off of the veil, they're just going to stand no chance. Yeah, for sure. And this is just really looking like EG's game, because now they're not really forced to push anything. They, it, they're in a position that they can just sit back and farm and make C9 have to go do something on their own. And if C9 just goes too far and pushes these lanes out, they're at risk of getting killed. And then if one of them does get killed and they don't have a buyout, they can go ahead and just take a rack super easily. And yeah, they're just going to go for the Roshan, which is going to die so damn quickly from EG. Even if they wanted to respond, doubt they could. And tell you the truth, even if they got there, I don't know that they can challenge it right now. EG doubling them up on the kill board. This is game four of our grand finals, and EG takes a Roshan and puts themselves in a great position to potentially close this game out. It's the BKB is actually going to be done on Arteezy in mere moments as well. Game five, by the way. You did yeah, say game, game four. Five. This is the last game, so. Yeah, game five. Yeah, it's a bit of a risky decision from EG doing these picks that we haven't really seen them do at all, but it's working out so well for them. Even though the laning phase was a bit rough, they ended up just getting so beneficial once his eye got his blink dagger and just made a huge epicenter in this bottom lane. And now, yeah, we see C9 going for a lot of risky plays because they know this game is getting very, very, very out of hand very fast. And yeah, we can see Pylai die, as you mentioned, hanging out, Demon hanging out in the woods, just hoping to catch any straggler they possibly can. But right now, EG's just playing it so safe, sticking very close together until they're ready to push his five and look to finish this out. And I'll tell you what, I've done that multiple times. I look up at the score, just naturally looking at the clock, and it makes me say, okay, we're just going to remind everyone it is game five. And I say game four because there are four notches. And uh, <laughs> that's how simplistic my brain is and how it works. But nonetheless, we're short of 30 minutes, and time is running out for Cloud9, and now AUI going to be engaged upon, but Zai is going to end up dying as Sing Sing was there to bail him out along with the Lucent Beam from Luna. However, here comes Arteezy looking for a target. Just look at him chunk away on AUI, even with the Necro Creeps on the way, and Pilot Eye going to be there to try to help things out. Mech's going to be popped. Fear right there with him, chasing him down. Sing Sing uses the Blade Mail, and now a little help from everyone, but Fear able to time-lapse out of those cogs, but not before. He uh, manages to add another kill to his total, bringing down AUI, and this might be, a, well, no, they can't. The creeps are actually all the way back up at their tier two down that, down that lane. In mid, though, attack. AUI down 30 seconds. They do have a creep wave up a little bit. Yeah, they just need to wait to the push because the Necrobook's actually going to be down, so I don't think they're going to be pushing it just yet. They're going to farm up a little bit more because they don't have any rust right now. Fear picks up an, a BKB as well now, so he is so damn farmed. He doesn't just deal a, a ridiculous amount of damage. He has so much survivability with this Lincoln Sphere and the BKB now. 
And now they spot a DD at this top rune. So that's a huge rune. And map control completely gone now from Cloud9. And Envy's honestly taking a pretty big chance going all the way up to where he is right now. He is, uh, his BKB will be done very, very soon. Um, if that's indeed the direction he wants to go, would imagine it's kind of where he has to go right now, having gone with the Helm of the Dominator and the drones built first. You see Fear bottling up that DD, so going to have a little bit of time uh, before he has to use it. But I think the big push is going to be coming right about now. We see Zai's even added Boots of Travel to his inventory and the Plate Mail. So not only does he have 1,300 HP, but he does have a fair amount of armor. He's got 29 armor right now on this Sand King. Yeah, and that's, that's just ridiculous, especially because of the Vlads as well as the Plate Mail and all the other things that he has have buffing him. And we do see level 16 picked up by the Lycan, so his Radiant ultimate has a very low cooldown. It's, it's got a very, very high uh, uptime. Cloud9 pushed up against the wall. This could be it. Here we go. Going to try to find a way uphill. A little confounded there, and now it's going to be Arteezy going to be hooked in. Didn't get fear, but he did get him, and Dima's going to blink inside with the BKB doing good damage. Sing Sing, though, eating a lot of it. The BKB's on both sides, allowing this to be a fairly even trade. And behind that, we're going to see another epicenter coming in from Sai and making it a double kill as both Lion and Chin died. And PPD even using the freezing field. So that's three buyouts, all expended. Eternal Envy, the uh, most notable of them. If they want to reset, they're going to have a chance to. But even if they just want to back off, let everything come off cooldown, yeah, that's what they're going to do. Makes total sense. Those buyouts are so costly. And now all three of the top net worth belong to evil geniuses, not just a little, but by a hell of a lot. Yeah, very well played by EG after this laning phase. And they're just showing the power that they have with this lineup that they, I guess they were saving. It, it seems like kind of a pocket strat, so it's been doing really well. And they do find PPD, at least, in the jungle. And now, oh, they're getting re-engaged on, too. Yep. And Fear is just hitting so hard right now. And we can see he cleans up the back of the fight, and now it's going to be Eternal Envy's turn. Now, he just spent his buyback, and he's going to drop. Zai gets the drop on him. Demon's trying to chase down Universe, but that was a bad decision, and he's going to drop again, too. That's four down, both, or all four down for quite some time. Look at top lane. Big creep wave on the way, yeah, mid lane. GG, GG, well played. A series that went the distance. A run back of what we saw in our upper bracket finals. Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses took us five games, but EG tallies that third win and walks away our winners here at the Monster Energy Invitational presented by Logitech. 10,000 bucks go into their back pocket and looking at the performance across the board, what can you say? All throughout this broadcast, Fog, we've been talking about how maybe the health of Fear was a concern. I don't think it concerned him too much. 14-0, I think he did all right. Yeah, he played really, really well this game, but the Blink Dagger of Zai just completely turned the whole game around for them and oh, just yeah. really, really well played by EG. And just congratulations to them and congratulations to Fear for winning his first land, so. <laughs> Excellent point. And you take a look at 4AUI, he never really got into gear. 0-5 oh, for him by the time all was said and done. And, you know, Demon, uh, you know, they, they committed so much to holding him down. And at one point, Demon had battled back and was atop the, uh, the CS board and atop the overall net worth board. But like you said, Zai playing on the Sand King, EG switching things up with that last draft and getting the job done. And we can see on the stage now, EG, our victors, talking to their manager and a little bit of smiles all across the board. And we're going to be bringing you our presentation ceremony coming up in just a little bit. But, you know, EG, um, <laughs> I'm really impressed with the fortitude they were able to show. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, how badly that series went with Cloud9 the first time they met them in the upper bracket finals. Cloud9 just kind of ran over them then. Yeah, for sure. But EG, yeah, you, like you said, well put. The way that their fortitude just, just, they played so well. They came back really in this good. game after just not everything was working out for them. They was trying to do this dual lane mid, which didn't end up working out for them because Demon got very, very farmed. But just everything just, and fall, the pieces all just fell together so perfectly. Weaver got so farmed. Fear just showing what he can do when he gets a lot of farm on his heroes. And yeah, that's really just. The Sand King Blink, just that one team <laughs> fight turned it the whole tide of the game. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, the, the play all around was good. And Arteezy taking the, the Lycan into the jungle, a little bit slow. I, I, you know, it ended up being and feeling a lot like a tri-lane mid. But, you know, just PPD there to help get Arteezy over that hump as a Lycan. You know, anyone who's tried the, to jungle Lycan in a pub or anything like that just knows when you first go into level one, it's miserable. You can't get yeah. anything going. You, you end up having to run back to the well. But just having that Crystal Maiden there to help out with the Frostbite and to help out getting you over that hump, 
he did stay on par. It, every time I looked at him, I felt like he should have been more more behind, but he just never was, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's really good when you end up... If Lycan isn't the worst jungler, if you can get your bottle up relatively early and you just keep using your wolves. And now, since the wolves haven't buffed with that HP regen once right. you get them to that, once you get them up, up to a higher level, it is really easy for you to start jungling. But yeah, great movement by PPD going in and out of the jungle, giving RTZ a lot of space just to get farmed. And just overall, great play by EG, and they really deserve this. They, both these teams played so spectacular in this tournament. Absolutely couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, just a special shout-out to Demon, by the way, the stand-in who uh, helped Cloud9 reach this point. And uh, a lot of questions coming in whether they could, but they certainly did, and they put on a hell of a show, finishing in second place. Our first place finishers, though, that's Evil Geniuses and standing by on stage, Miss Anna Prosser signing off from the caster's desk. I'm AC, that's Fog. See you next time, guys. Thanks, AC and Fog. Let's hear it for our amazing casters, huh? You guys are great. All right, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce to you our placing teams. First, in the Monster Energy Dota 2 Invitational presented by Logitech at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Our third place team, Team Liquid. Come on up, guys. Show them some appreciation. Well done. All right, thank you guys so much. Well done. Actually, um, TC, before you leave, do you have any shout outs you want to give to your fans or thank yous to your sponsors? Uh, just shout out to all of our fans, everyone who came out to the event here in Austin. Shout out to our sponsors, HyperX, Razor, Twitch, Shiny Things, Barracuda Networks, <laughs> sorry. Great, thank you so much and congratulations again. Well played. Thanks. And your second place team, you just saw them, but let's bring them up one more time and tell them how well we thought they played. Cloud9, come on out. Well done. Well done, guys. All right, do you guys have any shout outs, your thank yous to your sponsors, anything you'd like to say to the fans after you just played quite a few very strenuous games? Yeah, I mean, thanks everyone for watching, even though I'm disappointed we lost, but thanks to everyone who watched on stream, everyone who watched here, our sponsors, Alien Alienware, Logitech, uh, Crunchyroll, and uh, yeah. HyperX. HyperX, HyperX, sorry, HyperX as well. <laughs> thank you. All right, thanks guys. Congratulations again and well played. Go ahead and head back. All right. And without any, watch out for the trophy. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this safe. All right. And without further ado, our first place team, Evil Geniuses. Come on out, guys. All right, let's hear it for Evil Geniuses! Now, let's hear just a few words, your reactions to that five-game series. How did it go, Fear? Oh, um... It was long and very difficult, basically. But um, the first game went off well, I believe. Second game, not so well. And they just ping pong back and forth. So it was a real nail-biter. So we actually... I was really concerned to see like, who was going to win this game, the last one, because it could have been anyone. So I'm glad we just held it together and took it. Definitely. Well, congratulations are certainly in order. I want to give each of you time to give a brief shout out. So let's start over here. Any brief shout outs, thank yous. I know that you guys all have the same sponsors, so you don't all have to do it. But, you know, if you want to, you can. All right. Uh, shout out to my parents and Brewstar. Very nice. Shout out to my parents and also the boys in Vancouver. That same shout out for my family and everyone, all my fans and supporters, for everything could have done without you. Shout out to Grand Grand, NA Dura, and Stay Free. Shout out to my little brother Alex, shout out to Stay Free, shout out to all the sad boys out there. And most importantly, shout out to my sponsors here on my shirt. We have Monster, Kingston, Razor, Astro, Type Frag, 
Cyberpower PC, and BenQ. All right, thank you guys. And again, let's give them big congratulations. Well played. You are champions of the Monster Energy Invitational presented by Logitech. Well done. Thank you all for joining us, for tuning in at home. It's been absolutely our pleasure. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Monster Energy and Logitech, as well as everyone who brought these teams here and made South by Southwest possible. We appreciate it so much, and hopefully we will see you again soon for some more Dota 2. Thanks, guys. I'm Anna Prosser-Robinson signing off.